Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Broccoli is one of the must-have health foods, which is supposed to be good for you. Is this true? This review paper came out recently looking at whether eating broccoli reduced the risk of cancer. Let's see if what they found supports the positive message for broccoli. In general, the literature shows an inverse relationship between eating broccoli and risk for various types of cancer. However, the results are not consistent. So this is a systematic review and meta-analysis of observational studies, which attempts to clarify the answer. As in many nutritional studies, it is observational, and so we'll be showing a correlation between broccoli and cancer, if any exists, not showing causation. The review found 23 case control studies and 12 cohort studies. So what are these? A case control study is where a group of individuals who have the outcome of concern, in this case cancer, are compared to a similar group who do not. The history of the participants is then examined to see what is common and how it differs from the, the other group who did not have the outcome. Therefore, it is looking backwards. A cohort study can be backward looking, but are mostly prospective or forward looking. In these, a group of individuals who are healthy that is, they do not have the outcome, are followed for a period. The degree of exposure to the intervention, in this case, eating broccoli, is then compared to the incidence of the disease in the cohort. Both of these trial designs are observational. The data shows that in both sets of trials, there was a decrease in cancer risk. In the case control studies, this has an odds ratio of 0.58 to 0.7. And in the cohort study, from 0.82 to 0.96. So there is an inverse correlation between eating broccoli and cancer, and it is possible that consuming broccoli has a protective effect against the disease. Ways of measuring broccoli consumption are not clearly defined. So here is what they are using in this review. High broccoli consumption meant eating broccoli at least once per week, with some people eating it daily. Low broccoli consumption was defined as anything less than once per week, down to none at all. This table shows the results from the case-controlled studies. There is a line for each study, a total of 23. The table is split up by the type of cancer, lung, pancreatic, gastric, and so on. The measure is an odds ratio. So essentially the question is, how does eating broccoli impact your risk of getting cancer? A value of one means no impact. Less than one means that it reduces the risk and greater than one, that it increases the risk. This line represents one. So anything on the right means that broccoli increased the risk and on the left, that it reduced the risk. Two studies found that there was no difference with eating broccoli, while all the rest saw at least some benefit. This is a blow up of the chart summary. The mean odds ratio was 0.641, which means that the risk of all types of cancer was reduced by about 36%. The p-value for the combined result was less than 0.001, so this did indeed reach significance. This table is for the cohort studies, of which there were 12 included in the meta-analysis. Here we see two studies that had results either on the line or slightly over it one for all types and one for breast cancer. Overall, these studies gave an odds ratio of 0.88, which is a decrease in risk of about 12%. And the p-value was 0.03. So again, broccoli consumption seemed to help, though the odds ratio was less than the result from the case-controlled studies. So mechanistically, how is broccoli reducing the risk of cancer? Broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable which is low in calories and high in nutrients, such as fiber, potassium, folate, and vitamin C and K, which make it generally a healthy choice. But what specific chemicals cause the anti-cancer effects? This is proposed to be sulforaphane. Broccoli contains the precursor in the form of glucoraphanin, which is converted to sulforaphane by myrosinase, an enzyme. Sulforaphane is a potent activator of NRF2, NRF2 is a transcription factor that regulates many cell defense genes, such as antioxidants and DNA repair. It is one of the key protective factors in the cell. 
more specifically to cancer. So furofane has been shown to have protective effects against various forms of cancer, such as colon, gastric, bladder, prostate, breast, skin, and lung. It does this by detoxifying carcinogens, reducing oxidative stress, initiating cell cycle arrest, the promotion of apoptosis, and the regulation of epithelial to mesenchyme transition, a key step in cancer metastasis. In its isolated form, it was protective against damage from UV radiation and skin cancer, and in reducing harm from prostate cancer. There was no external funding for the review, and the authors declared no conflict of interest. In fact, I'm not even sure that there is a broccoli marketing board to provide any funding. In the conclusions, the authors note on the positive side the amount of data and the number of participants across the studies, giving it considerable statistical power. The results are not consistent, but as they point out, there were different ways of classifying the amount of bro broccoli, as well as cultural, demographic, geographic, and genetic differences across the participants, as well as different cooking methods. So this is not that surprising. With respect to the cooking methods, one comment that they did make is that high temperatures may destroy some of the healthy metabolites and they recommend eating broccoli raw. As with all observational nutrition, it is difficult to draw clear conclusions. And of course, the results are in any case only showing a correlation. However, most of the studies showed a beneficial effect of broccoli so it does support the message that broccoli is good for us and sulfurophane appears to be the main active ingredient. Broccoli is not the only food with sulfurophane. It is also available from other vegetables such as Brussels sprouts, mustard greens, kale, turnips, cauliflower, bok choy, for example. Broccoli sprouts have much higher dose of sulfurophane than the grown vegetable. It is also possible to take it as a supplement if you are not that keen on broccoli or vegetables in general. Thank you for your attention and I wish you all well.